Praise the name of the Lord. God is so good. He never fails us. Have you taken Jesus as your friend? Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to welcome each one that's come to the church this evening and those that are meeting with us online. May the Lord richly bless you. I pray that you were blessed by the service this morning. Amen. The children were blessed by the Sunday school. And I know that to this evening we are all going to be blessed once again. And we give God all praise, glory, and honor. Friends, let's lift our hands to heaven as we open up the service in prayer. And we say thank you to the Lord. Father, we love you and we appreciate you, Lord God. We want to say thank you, Lord God, that we can be in the house of the Lord once again, Lord God, at a live at five. Hallelujah. And I pray, Lord God, for your richest blessings. Lord God, I thank you, Father God, for favor, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for favor in healing, favor in finances, favor, Lord God, in breakthroughs, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, as we continue to fast. Let your people be strong in the Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you'll strengthen us for your service, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. I give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor, for you alone are worthy and worthy to be praised. I ask you, Lord God, to just take over the service now. Move by your power and by your spirit, I pray. And I pray for an anointing over this time of praise and worship. An anointing over the word, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Turn to somebody next to you and wave at them and tell them it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's go for it. Find the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. 
thy will be done, Lord. Have your way in us, Lord. Let thy will be done, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. My let thy will be done in this church in these people everyone thy will be done not ours, your will Lord forgive us where we have failed you forgive us where we have stepped out of your will let thy will be done in every one of our lives I pray Lord work through our lives Use us for your glory, I pray. I thank you, Lord God, that you'll be magnified, you'll be glorified in every one of our lives, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for your word tonight. I pray, Lord God, that it will touch the hearts and the lives of your people. And I thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, in this short time, I pray that you'll speak into somebody's life in an impact way I pray in Jesus mighty name amen and amen God bless you you may be seated Lorna God bless you speak the word of the Lord God bless praise the Lord the word of God is quick and powerful it is like a two-edged sword it knows the discernment between the heart and the spirit the Spirit of the Lord knows all things and searches all things. And the Spirit of the Lord knows your heart. There's not one thing hid from the presence of the Lord. And Lord Jesus, as your word goes out tonight, I pray that our hearts will be open to your word. And that as the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the, the face of the waters in Genesis... So the Spirit of the Lord would hover over the hearts of the children of the earth as your word is getting preached from pulpits around the world. Thank you, God, for the great outpouring of your Spirit. Thank you, God, for this end-time revival. God, I pray that you would protect the children in Jerusalem. Father God, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray, we pray for the peace of the world. And we pray for salvation to come to the hearts of many people hearing the gospel in the earth earth right now. Father God, that they would be drawn to, to listen to your word and accept this wonderful gospel, this wonderful plan that you have laid from the predestination. You predestined us from the foundations of the earth. Oh God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you that you love us. And as we go into your word this afternoon, I pray that it will be a bright light to us as as uh, even as Lord, your spirit would just move among us in Jesus' mighty name. And God's kings and priests gave me a big, great, loud amen. Hallelujah. Give a great amen. I pray that your neighbors, yeah, you say amen. Amen. Let the word of the Lord, let it be in Jesus' name. This afternoon, I want to talk about the upper room. Everybody say the upper room the upper room. Hallelujah. The upper room. I was doing a study on it and I was so encouraged by this and I pray that it will encourage you this afternoon. Abiding in the safe place of the most high God is the highest upper room you could ever go to. But I want us to turn this afternoon to Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6 and I'm going to read from verse 1. 
Daniel chapter 6 and verse 1. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. So there were 120 people in charge of the kingdom and three people governed those people which were in charge and one of them was a man of God. Amen. One of them was a man of God. Sometimes you might be feeling like a bit of a Daniel, like you might be standing alone, but it is not the time to stop going to the high places of prayer. In verses 6, so these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, May King Darius live forever. And his ego got in the way. The royal administrators, the, pre, the prefects, the satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an interdict and enforce a decree that if anyone prays to any, any god or human being during the next 30 days except you, O majesty, he shall be thrown into the den of lions. To me, it sounds like they may have excluded Daniel from this meeting. Maybe there have been people doing things behind your back. But I want you to lift your hand and say, God is in control. I might feel alone, but God is in control. Going down to verse 10. Now, when Daniel learned the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room, his upper room, his chamber, where the windows were open towards Jerusalem three times a day. He got down on his knees and he prayed, giving thanks to God, just as he had done before. Church, it is time to pray like never before, like you've never, ever, ever prayed before. It's time to get closer to God more than ever before, no matter what the voices of the world are doing. Draw closer to God than ever before. And here's a one step further. Love like never before. Those people that may have hurt you, I want to encourage you. It's time to love them anyway. Say, Lorna, I'm going to love them anyway. I'm going to pray for them anyway because in heaven one day the only thing that is going to matter when you stand before God is not about everything, uh, your accolades and your degrees on the wall. It's going to be how much did you love your neighbor on your walk through this path of life. The windows, the windows were wide open. Pastor often talks about the windows of heaven when it comes to the tithes and the offering. Is your tithes and your offerings in a place that God's windows are open upon your life? Hunter spoke about it this morning as well. But this goes to an even deeper place of the windows of heaven where an outpouring of the Spirit of the Lord would be upon your life to such a degree. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you the whole story of Daniel, but you all know that he, he went along and he got thrown into the lion's den because he prayed three times a day. He kept on praying. He said, literally like Job, he literally said, though they slay me, yet will I serve him. No matter what is going on, I'm going to love Jesus. I'm going to serve God no matter what. The windows were open towards Jerusalem. Daniel was in the lion's den, but he was saved from the lion's den because he knew the place of the upper room. There was a place in the upper room where the windows of heaven were open upon Daniel's life. And the, the prayers that he had prayed had put a hedge and a wall and a fire of protection around about him that not even hungry lions could eat him. He could pet them like little house cats. When, when the king eventually came into those chambers, Daniel was safe. And you will be safe too. If you would only spend more time in the presence of the Lord, more time, more time in God's presence. The, li the lions will not devour you when you are in the hiding place and the shadow of the Most High God. You will have protection in prayer. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. 
It is the upper room. And the righteous will run into the name of the Lord. The El Shaddai, Jehovah Nisi, the more than enough, the conqueror, the coming king. All the names of God are a strong tower around the righteous. Run into it and you will be safe like a Daniel. You will have victory over the lions. You will have, do you know that the Bible says that the devil is like a roaring lion and he's wandering about and he's seeking whom he may devour. And the thing that God wants to devour in your life, the stuff really doesn't matter. The thing he really wants is your salvation. He really, really would like you to backslide and fall away from God. It is time to draw near to the throne of God. And Jesus has come that we would have victory over the devil and the works of the devil. I wonder if Daniel never read Psalm 55 and verse 17, where it says, Morning and every morning and noon I cry out. Every sorry, every morning and noon I cry out in distress. And he hears my prayer, even three times a day, evening, morning, and noon. In the evening, in the morning, and at noon, David cried out to the Lord. And I wonder if Daniel took this verse to heart and said, yes, I'm going to actually do this. It's a challenge to us as Christians. We often see other religions rolling out their mats and closing doors because it's time to pray. Christians, it's time to pray. It's time to pray like never before. I don't care if you've got to go into the bathroom or the toilet rooms at your offices. Shut the door and get down on your knees and pray. Spend time in prayer. You might just make a revival happen going on in that washing room. Hallelujah. It's time to pray like you've never prayed before. There's an upper room that Christians need to go to every day. And we find it in Psalm 91, which has been spoken about so many times over this pandemic. And if we just look in verses 1, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of where? The most high, the highest place, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty One. Bearing up. Loved ones in prayer in the upper room places is very, very important. And I'm going to be talking about another upper room. In Mark chapter 2 and verses 4, we read, And when they could not come near him, which is Jesus, because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where Jesus was, where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down, let down, down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. This is a story where these men had a friend that they believed that Jesus could heal and save. Do you have a friend that you believe that Jesus can heal and save this afternoon? Maybe it's time to carry them in prayer to the upper rooms. These friends carried the paralytic man, and it was a heavy job, up up to the upper room of that house and there there was a porthole there was a window that they were able to let him down right to the feet of Jesus and in the high place of the upper room as high as that place is there are feet there there are feet that are nailed that have been nailed to a cross and that is the feet that we would bow at and we would bear up our friends and pray and we see in the story that that man Jesus forgave him of his sin before he healed him because salvation is far more important than any healing or anything you could ever have in your life. The man was forgiven of his sins and healed. And instead of lying on his bed, he got out of that meeting and he picked up his bed and he walked out holding that bed under his arm like a testimony. And he said, once I was a paralytic man, but now I walk. Watch me carry my bed. Waiting in the upper room for your friends and your family is a very important thing to do. Going further, Jesus himself went into a place of an upper room while he walked here on earth. And we find this in the, in the account of Luke 22 and verse 10. And he said to them, Behold, 
When you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he enters. Then you shall say to the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Verse 12. Then he will show you a large furnished upper room. There make ready. So, verse 13, so they went and they found it, just as he had said to them, and they prepared the Passover. Now, in this Passover room was before Jesus, the day before Jesus was crucified. We've just celebrated Easter. This was the day before Jesus was crucified. When they came into that Passover room, there were things that were very significant in the room. There was water. The minute they came into the room, Jesus washed their feet. He was a servant to all. There was water, there was wine, and there was bread, which all symbolize the the teachings of, of the communion. And in this time, the disciples were taught by Jesus doctrinal truths that us Christians practice today, communion, sharing the, the, the body and the bread, the, the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And there's a very important lesson in this upper room experience. Jesus was there firstly. And secondly, I believe a very important thing to do. If you're having a conversation with someone, for me, it is manners to look that we were told as children, look the person in the eye when they're talking to you. Look at someone when they're talking to you. And when you look at them, you listen before you jabber, 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 jabber. You don't talk, talk, talk. You've got to, you've got to wait and you've got to listen. And when they are silent, then it's your, your turn if they want you to uh, converse back. Isn't that good manners? For me, that's good manners to listen to somebody and listen to their story. If you, if you do this in your life, there'll be a lot less arguments because you'll hear someone's heart. Okay. So now the disciples were in the upper room and they went jabba, 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 jabba. Lord Jesus, I need, do you know what all my needs are? They were like, they listened to Jesus. And sometimes in the upper room experiences of prayer, it is time to wait on the Lord and listen to what the Father has to say to you. Do you know that Jesus is alive, Jesus is real, and Father God wants to talk to you in the places of the upper room. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And that place of wait literally means to stop and listen. Not to stop and fall asleep, but to listen. Now we have another place of an upper room. After the ascension of Jesus, the people were told to go to Jerusalem and wait. Pastor's been talking about this since the ascension day that we have celebrated as well. Because there's 10 days of fasting and prayer before the, the fire of the Holy Spirit was poured out on Pentecost. And we are just respecting that. We have the Holy Spirit with us right now, and we, we know that. But we are believing God for even greater breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Um, they had to wait in the upper room. They waited there for 10 days. Nobody went to bath. Nobody went to quickly go to pick and pay for some groceries. No. They had 120 people. If you read your Bible, they waited in the upper room for, for 10 days. And they were told to wait and to pray. And as they prayed, I believed that they were saying, Lord Jesus, what must we pray? Well, you taught us how to pray. Our Father, which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And in 10 days, that our Father became some other language as the fire of the Holy Spirit fell upon the house of the people at Pentecost in the upper room. You have an upper room too where the fire of God would fall on you. 
in Acts chapter 1 verse 4. On one occasion, while he was teaching, he was eating with them and he gave them a command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father, which my father promised. Can you see the alignment? Daniel faced Jerusalem when he prayed. Hallelujah. Now they had to wait in Jerusalem. So what do we have to do? We put, our, we put our eyes on Jesus towards heaven, the new Jerusalem. And they waited on the Father for the promise which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, just as Jesus telling them what would happen, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Fire. Hallelujah. Those that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. If you read in your Bibles, just to save time this afternoon, in your own quiet time, you can read Acts chapter 1, and even from verses 13, 14, all the way through. The 120 waited. Now, this is very significant. The 120 waited in the upper room for the fire of God to fall. Daniel waited alone. There were 120 satraps, not 120 Christians, and he stood alone in that upper room. But this prayer meeting in Acts was a prayer meeting of 120 Christians, and they were waiting on the Lord. And there are many more that are for you than are against you. This corporate prayer and waiting on the Lord caused a unity among them. And if there were anything among them that they had uh, things in their heart against another, I believe, like Pastor said this morning, strife would have stopped that blessing. They had to first be in complete unity. They first had to hear each other out before the fire could fall. In Acts chapter 4, in verse uh, 31, and when they had prayed the, prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. Ha ha! It was shaken. Hallelujah. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God out with boldness. Hallelujah. Now, was that the last upper room experience? No. I found another one. We find even after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, there's an occasion where Paul goes to the upper room. And we find it in Acts chapter 20 and verse 8. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. So this was after the ascension, after the outpouring of the Spirit, they were operating in the gifts of the Spirit. They had boldness to preach. Paul was preaching, and he was preaching with the fire of God. And you know, if you read this verse, he, they were breaking bread, so they were doing what they had listened to Jesus doing in their waiting times in the upper room. But now this time it was his, his turn to talk, because the story is actually a little bit humorous. Paul spoke to them until midnight. Okay, guys, 15 minutes can sometimes feel long. Maybe I'll go a bit over this afternoon. Midnight. He spoke, he preached to that crowd until midnight. And um, one of the guys got tired and he fell and he actually died. He fell off the wall in the upper room and they had to pray for him and he came back to life. Praise the Lord. But that's not my point here. We're going to get it. They came to break bread. Since Paul was re ready to leave the next day, and he talked to them, and he kept on speaking until midnight. Now, this is important to me. Now, there were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathering. I think I've nailed home the point this afternoon that the upper room is a place of prayer. But there's one more point I want to nail through. If the upper room was a place of prayer, then what were the lamps representing? The lamps were representing, here it goes, the lamps were representing thy 
word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So when you go up into your upper room to pray, bring the word of God with you. And if you would take that word and eat it, the Bible goes even further. It talks to you about being the light of the world. You are the light of the world. In the upper room, there were many lamps. If you are the light of the world, you are a lamp in the upper room that is shining forth the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that as they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they became effective witnesses. And I pray that you will become an effective witness. The fire that came down that day in the upper room, the day of Pentecost, was not a fire that could be extinguished by any man. It was a fire that came down from God himself. That day of Pentecost pushed out those 120 people into the streets to set the world ablaze for the Lord Jesus Christ, ablaze with the gospel. Peter preached on that day, and 3,000 people were saved, and even more, the overflow. Hallelujah. And I believe those 3,000 people were filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, and they began to, to preach with boldness the Word of God. And you must remember, at that time, the temple and the, the, the Jewish people were very interested in this gospel because the veil of the temple had been ripped from the top to the bottom when Jesus died on the cross. Remember that? So I can imagine them standing in the temple with this torn veil. What a place to preach the gospel. That there was an access, the Holy Spirit was poured out and the veil of the temple was torn. And they were preaching the gospel at this stage right in the temple. They had a window of opportunity to minister the gospel to the Jewish people at that time. And they were hungry from, for God. It had just been the time of Passover and there were people from all over the earth at, at, in Jerusalem. Church, let me tell you something. There's a window of opportunity right now on the earth. And I believe it is the last window of opportunity for the gospel to go out. And if you know how to share the gospel with somebody, don't let your mask stop you. Say, I won't let my mask stop me. I won't let my mask stop me. I will carry my, my friends. I will carry my neighbors into that upper room. There is a window of opportunity where the fire of God is being poured out upon the earth like never before. Be a participator, not a spectator in the end time move of the Holy Spirit in the earth. The veil was torn from the top to the bottom and the power of God came upon those people that were in that place and they went out with fire. The people of God wanted to know more about Jesus. They wanted to know more about the power of the Holy Spirit, which was evident in speaking in tongues. And if you've never spoken in tongues and you want to be uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, don't let coronavirus stop you. This is the time to seek God's face like never before. And I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will come over you even under the sound of my voice and that you would start speaking in other languages because as you start speaking in tongues you'll be praying the will of the Father on the earth as it is in heaven so Lord let it be done on earth hallelujah Daniel had a window the disciples had a window and you have a window too the disciples, Daniel had an upper room, the disciples had an upper room, and you have an upper room too. It is called the shadow of the Most High God, and I pray that you would run into that safe place and pray like never before. And as we lift our hands, we say out loud that Jesus Christ is Lord. Father God, I just want to pray for anyone in this place this afternoon. Lord, that is just needing an infilling of the Holy Spirit. I want you to just... He's my Lord and I love him so. One day he came down from heaven And he walked this world just like you and me He healed the broken hearted And he set the captives free the lame could walk and the blinded eyes could see. beat 
placed a crown of thorns upon his head. Then they led him up the mountain, and they nailed him to the cross, and there he hung whilst all the people I love him so. 